Okay, welcome back to Programming Logic and Design course. This lecture has covered the overview of computers. Our main objective is to go through a computer system and also the terminologies and definitions. Also, we will discuss the simple program logic. So a computer system is a combination of all the components required to process and also store data using a computer. So a computer system will consist of both the computer hardware and the computer software, the users, and all the possible components we need in order to process data using computers or solving a problem using computers. So next is a hardware. A hardware is a equipment that associated with a computer. An example would be the computer hard drive, the memory, and the monitor. So again, computer hardware is any physical component of the computer. Then the computer software will be the program instruction that tells the hardware what to do. So that will be the soft. We have two types of software, the application software, and also we have the system software. So example of a system software will be the operating system, which again manages all the computer hardware resources. Now, a program is instruction written by the programmers. So later on, a program becomes what we call the software also. And the programming is the process of developing the software or writing software instructions. Now, we have two types of software. We said application software, such as word processing, spreadsheets, payroll and inventory, even games. Or, or any types of apps is application software, which means application software is any software that perform a specific task. Then a system software example will be the operating system, such as Windows, Linux, Unix. So a system software is a software that interacts with the computer hardware, also manages the computer hardware resources. And the computer hardware and software accomplish three major operations. The first is the input. This is where the data items such as the test, numbers, images, or sounds can be entered into the system, which is the computer. Then we have the processing. Here we do the calculations and also comparison performed by the central processing unit, which we call the CPU the brain of the computer. Then we also have the output. This is where the result information will be sent to. An example will be to the printer or the monitor to display the results. Then we also have a cloud-based device that also can access the results or the output through the internet. Okay. Next, what is a programming language? Here we say programming language is used to write computer instructions called a program code or used to develop software applications and also system softwares. Also writing instruction is called a coding the program. So example of a programming language can be Visual Basic, C Sharp, C++, Java, also Python and et cetera. Next is the syntax. A syntax will be the rules that govern the word usage and punctuation. So mistakes in a language usage are called the syntax errors. So the same thing applies to uh, English language. Uh, the grammatical rules of English language is the same as the syntax rule for programming languages. Next is the computer memory. So computer memory is a temporary storage and normally when we are doing any work in our computer, we do it from the memory. When we open the file, the file will be open or loaded into the memory. When we start our computer, the operating system again is loaded to the memory. So the memory is internal storage, which we also call the random access memory, RAM. It's volatile memory, which means if the computer power goes off, all the data in the memory will be erased or deleted. So loss data will be lost when the power is off. Then we also have the permanent storage devices, which we call the non-volatile memory. 
Example would be the hard drive or flash drive. And uh, data is stored permanent, whether the power of a computer is on or off is permanent. Then we also have a compiler or interpreter. Normally when we write a programming language, uh, such as Java or Python using Java or Python, we create what we call the source code. The source code looks like English language. Now we know computers only understand machine language, which is 0101, we call the binary language. So a compiler normally would translate the source code which is almost in English language into machine language, which will be in the binary form. Also the same thing interpret also do, does. Now the difference between the two is that with compiler, it will translate all the source code once. Interpreter will translate the source code one line at a time. So Java use interpreter and an example of C or C++ is a compiler. Now, program executes or runs. When you write your source code and you compile it or you interpret it into machine language and there's no any syntax error, which means syntax error free, the next step is to execute it or run it. So this is where input will be accepted. Some process will, will occur, then we get our result. So when we execute the program, we finally get a result. Now, programs also have what, as we said earlier, what is called syntax error. So programs with syntax error cannot execute. So anytime we compile our program, uh, compile or interpret, which is translating the source file in the form of English to machine language, if there's any syntax error, we cannot execute, we need to fix the errors. And as we said earlier, again, the sentence error is the same as grammatical errors. So we have another error called the logical errors. This is an error that in a pro program, it may cause either by the programmer or the user enter a wrong input or wrote a wrong application that's solving the problem. For example, instead of adding two numbers, and we went and divide two numbers. So which means the program will compile, it will execute run, but it will give us a wrong result. So we see errors in the program logic produce incorrect output. And this incorrect output will be either due to the input that we enter or due, the pro due to the process, the formula we may use to solve the problem was incorrect. Because we know computers cannot make a mistake. Garbage in, garbage out which means if you fill in the wrong er uh, data, you may get the wrong result. We also have what we call the logic of a computer program. So here we say the sequence of specific instruction in specific order. Normally in programming language, we have selection statements that will change the order that the program executes based on a condition is true or false. Or we have a loop, a loop means I want to do something over and over again. So I may use a loop and that will change. So every programming language have three types of control structures. The sequence, sequence control structure is built in, which means the program is executed from top down. Then we have the selection, which means we may have a condition that can change the flow of the program. And also we have repetition, which is the loops. Now, a variable is a memory location where we can store data. So for example, in Java, we may declare variable and we have to specify the type. Then we can store data there. Now, when we declare variable, we don't need to worry the location of the memory. This is done by the operating system. All we need to do is declare the variable uh, we should have the data type for the variable, which means the type of data we are going to store, whether numbers or characters or decimal values, etc. So that will be the conclusion of this lecture. So in this lecture, uh, we just went through the basic computer system, mostly technologies and the concept of programming language. Thank you and see you in the next lectures.